Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. We're God's Church of Love every Saturday at 1215. Listen to this, y'all. God's got some encouraging words. Now, what I've been told from the scripture that he's showing me is some of y'all are in some serious battles. You are duking it out. <laughs> You're duking it out in the spirit. You're duking it out in your mind. There's a battle going on in the minds of a lot of God's people. And I want to share with you what God has to say about those battles you're fighting, those battles you're fronting, and those battles that are coming up in your face trying to intimidate you. Hmm. And let me add, for some of you, there are even threats of battles coming your way. And I want to share with you what God has to say about the threats of the battles and the reasons for them. We're going to go with me to Isaiah chapter 7, starting at verse 1. And it came to pass in the days of Ahaz, the son of Jotham, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah, that Rezin, the king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Remaliah, king of Israel, went up toward Israel to war against it, but could not prevail against it. Now, before I go any further, I want you to notice that when God, <coughs> back in the day, when anybody wanted to be insulting to a king, they would refer to them calling their mother. Let's say Lucille Ball is a mother of King uh, Frankenstein. Well, they would call Franken's King Frankenstein the son of Lucille Ball. That was considered a slap in their face. And that is the way God did it. That's the way a lot of the other people, when they didn't like Saul, they called him the son of so-and-so. When Saul didn't like David, he called him the son of Jesse. So just to let you know, that is that is what's coming up down the pike here. And I want you to see how God addresses this whole situation. So you see that King Rezin, the, that Rezin, the king of Syria. Rezin is the king of Syria. All right. Pekah is the son of Remalia. The, and Pekah is the king of Israel. All right. Now, so I want you to hear these different uh, terms here. Number two. And it was told the house of David saying, I just what you know comes down through the grapevine. I heard it through the grapevine. Check it out. Syria is confederate with Ephraim, and his heart was moved, and the heart of his people, as the trees of the wood, were moved with the wind. That means they were shaken, shaken, shaken. This is why. I want to read verse one again. This is why they were intimidated. And my question to you is why? Are you so intimidated? Why are you so fearful? Listen to this. I'm milking this because I want you to see what God is saying. All right. <laughs> All right. They went up toward Jerusalem to war against it, but could not prevail against it. Now, that's what all those people I listed in verse one were trying to do. Verse two, they heard about it and they got so scared they were shaking like the leaves in the wind. Verse three, then said the Lord unto Isaiah, go forth now and meet Ahaz, thou and Shirizabud, thy son, at the end of the conduit of the upper pool in the highway of the fullest field. Verse four, and say unto him, take heed and be quiet. That means shut your mouth. Now I got to say it in a country form, colloquial form. Shut your mouth. Don't you say a word in your own defense. You be still. You sit there. You take it because it ain't going to happen. It ain't going to hurt you. Let's start back at verse 3 and say it God's way. Then said the Lord unto Isaiah, Go forth now to meet Ahaz. Thou in Shrews, okay, okay, and go to, to the upper field. Verse four, and say unto him, 
take heed and be quiet. Fear not, neither be faint hearted for the two tails of these smoke and fire brands, for the fierce anger of resin with Syria and of the son of Remelia. There's the slap right there. He, he knocked him off his throne, basically. He just dissed him. The son of Remelia, five. Because Syria, Ephraim, and the son of Remelia have taken evil counsel against thee, saying, let us go up against Judah and vex it, and let us make a breach therein for us, and set a king in the midst of us, even the, the king of Tabal. So what they want to do is they want to dethrone and replace now, seven, thus saith the Lord God, it shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. So let me say it colloquial wise. Tank gonna happen. Tank going down that way. Because God is going to thwart the plan of the enemy. For the head of Syria is Damascus, is verse eight. And the head of Damascus is resin. And within three score and five years shall Ephraim be broken that it be not a people. And the head of Ephraim is Samaria. And the head of Samaria is Ramalia's son. They don't even call him king. He just says Ramalia's son. If ye will not believe, surely ye shall not be established. Moreover, the Lord said again unto Ahaz, saying, Ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God. Ask it either in the depth or in the height above. Some of y'all might need to ask a sign from the Lord right now. Is this what you're talking about, this battle I'm in, this threat that's coming down the pipe? Is that what you're talking about? Can you show me a little something, something? Can you do this or can you do that to strengthen my faith? Because I want to believe so that I can be established. All right? Listen. And he said, hear ye now, house of, of David, is it a small thing for you to weary me, but to weary God? Because he wouldn't, he wasn't going to tempt the Lord. He didn't want to, you know, ask him for a sign. Verse 14, therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Now, you know what Emmanuel means. And then I'm going to stop there and move on to the next verse. I mean, to the next uh, book. Emmanuel means God with us. So no matter what is coming down the pike, no matter what threat is coming your way, strengthen yourself in the word of God. Go before God in prayer. Rebuke the fear that's welling up in your heart. Rebuke the anxiety that's got you shaking and nervous. Rebuke that dread that's got you in a bad mood, that's got you emotionally grumpy, snappy, fearful. Rebuke all of that. You don't need that. That's nothing. You don't need any of that. Why? Because God is the one that's calling the shots. The battle is the Lord's. It's not yours. It's the Lord's. And he's got the winning ticket. He's going to win this battle for you. He's going to fight the battle for you. Shut your mouth and be still. All right. Moving right along. Psalms 24. Go with me to Psalms 24. And it says, starting at verse 4 to verse 10, He that hath clean hands, are your hands clean? And a pure heart, what condition is your heart in? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Hmm. Six. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Selah. 
Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. Here it is. The Lord, mighty in battle. There's that word. <laughs> battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? Or shall I say, let me read it correctly. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. And I'm feeling in my spirit to reiterate what Isaiah chapter 7 said. Be still. Be quiet. Don't fear. Keep that mouth shut. Everything in you might want to rise up and defend yourself. Everything in you might want to go through the litany of all the good you've done. Why are you doing this to me? All, all that's in you might want to rise up and, and, and stand in your own defense. No, you're not going to do that to me. You're not going to disrespect me. You're not going to uh, lie on me like that. No, I don't care what they say about you. I don't care how many people they say it in front of. Stand still and be quiet. Let God be your defense. You hear me? Let God fight this battle. Because if you step in God's way, if you jump in front of God and say, hey, I got this. Let me handle this. Oh, you gonna handle it. All right. And it's going to be a mess that blows up in your face. James chapter three, starting at verse five to verse 11. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter, a little fire kindleth. Hmm. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body. Members means your arms, legs, your extremities. And set it and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on the fire of hell. For every kind of beast and of birds and serpents and in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind, but the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which is made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Don't the fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? And I leave you with that. That is what ends up happening when we allow our emotions to fly through that, that bell clapper of ours. If we're not careful, oh boy, we can be, that little tongue could be a weapon of mass destruction. And some of you, your tongues are destroying other people's lives because you are sowing discord among brethren. That's one of the things God really hates, sowing discord. That means you're causing friends to be enemies. That means you're ca causing acquaintances to be enemies. You're causing all kind of breakups and relationships. You're breaking marriages. You're breaking all kind of stuff, making people look bad in someone else's eyes, telling lies. To make a person look even worse when they don't, and they don't even give the person a chance. They just stand there and 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 sentence and punish them and send them to prison. And and the person is wondering, well, what, well, what did I do? Because of your lies, you keep your mouth shut. You get a control of that spirit of yours. You shut down those emotions. You take authority over you. You don't even have to take authority over the devil. Over the devil. You take authority over you. Because reactionary moves, emotional decisions, rash, mm, rash movements can cause explosive results. So you have to be very careful about letting the cat out the bag and the cat being you. Don't let Jack out the box.
seal that baby up, tape him down, stick him in the cellar, and put a padlock on that baby. But you be still and be quiet. Now, I'm just pausing here. This is a little station break to ask you to please consider not only hitting the like and all of that, but if this ministry has been a blessing to you, please consider donating. I'm about to graduate and this is a very expensive time of year and I don't ask for offerings, but I am asking today. Thank you so much. What I want to share with you is James chapter 2, verse 17. Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Hmm. So you believe in God, you believe in Jesus, you believe in all things God is not going to get you into the pearly gates. The devils believe, they know, they, they go beyond belief, they know it. They know who Jesus is. That's why they tremble. Some of y'all don't tremble when you should. 20. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? 21. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, or you can say it was counted unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Can God count on you to be his friend? Really? 24. Ye see now, <clears throat> ye see then how that by works a man is justified. Here it is. Here he's coming now. Check it out. And now by faith, and not by faith only. 25. Likewise also was Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Now, check this out. Let's paint a scenario. Okay, Lynn is who I call Twinkles. The reason I call her Twinkles is because she and I are the same, the same age. Not the same size. I'm much bigger than she is. But anyway, we are the same age. And... Because of her, her colorful personality, I call her Twinkles. So, twin for short, you know, Twinkles. Okay, anyway, so let's paint a picture. I can't do a dramatization because she's out there and I'm over here and there's no camera to do it in front of. So let's say that uh, Lynn, you know, my, my twin sister gets mad at me. And she decides that she is going to send threats. She's sending them by all her friends, all her buddies, everybody. She's been backbiting, talking about me behind my back. I mean, it is really getting ugly. It's, it's, it's getting low down, y'all. And I'm scared because I don't know how to fight. And I may not have the wherewithal to rise up against her and defend myself. And she's spreading all these lies and um, uh, this is a scenario. This is not the truth. This is a supposition. What if? All right. So consider this now. Here I am all frantic and fearful and all that. And then she gets me in front of a crowd. Let's say I'm at a restaurant. We're laughing and joking and talking. And then she comes in. She finds out where I am. And she's going to front me off in public. And she's going to talk about me like a D.O.G. And here I'm standing there with egg all over my face, embarrassed, humiliated. What do I do? What do I do? Now, I could get ghetto on her. And I can pull all them old cuss words out my back pocket. Put on that. I may not be able to throw a punch, but I sure can flap my lips. And I can go toe to toe. If I want to, right? Think about it now. You ain't going to diss me in public. You shut your mouth before I shut it for you. 
See, I could rise up like that. Sure I can. Selling wolf tickets, hoping she'll back down. Or I can eat crow, so to speak, keep my mouth shut, allow myself to be humiliated the same way my Lord and Savior allowed himself to be humiliated and put on the cross to die by the hands of the very people he created himself. The sinless one, and I ain't sinless. So am I going to follow his example? Am I going to be still and keep my mouth shut? Or am I going to let Lynn have it coming up one end down the other? Am I going to air her dirty laundry as she airs mine? What am I going to do? What are you going to do if that happens to you? Do you hear what I'm saying? Now, as you ponder on that, picture what your reaction would be. Now, here's the next question. Who are you leaning on at that moment? Who are you leaning on? Now, am I going to lean to my own devices? Am I going to pull that switchblade I got hidden in my pocketbook? Some of y'all, in some of y'all's cases, am I going to pull out that twin, that, uh, <laughs> that, uh, 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 what they call it, uh, Saturday night special, that 22 out my bra? What am I going to do? What am I going to do with Lynn? Am I going to take my plate of food and bash it in her face? Get her before she gets me. Because I see blood in her eyes. I see red. I know she wants my throat. What am I going to do? Now, if you're going to act in faith, F-A-I-T-H, like Abraham did, let's say, here's the faith scenario. I sit there with my mouth shut. I start praying under my breath, Lord, I bind that spirit of violence in the name of Jesus. Lord, protect me in Jesus' name. Don't let any, any harm come near me or anybody here at the table. Father, send her back out that door. Shut her down and send her out the door. Send interference. Do not allow her to get to me in the name of Jesus. Send your angels to do this battle on my behalf. Whatever can come to your mind, or are you going to get up and handle it yourself? You know, I got this. Hmm, no, I ain't taking this crap. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? See, that is right there. That's where the nitty gritty hits the road. When the stuff hits the fan, baby, you got to decide who's going to be the one blocking you. Your own hands and devices, your own words, your own weapons of mass destruction, or are you going to hide behind your shadow? Are you going to hide in the shadow of the Almighty? Are you going to let him be your shield, your buckler, your horn of protection? Are you going to let him be your high tower? Are you going to let him fight this battle for you? All right, I'm leaving you with that question. I just want you to really see that scene because I'm telling you that a lot of times we think we're born again Christian till something like that happens. We think we're born again Christian till somebody threatens our well-being. Somebody threatens our money. Somebody threatens our household. Somebody threatens whatever it is we're trying to, to hold up. Somebody else is trying to come against it. What are you going to do? Hmm. Think about that one. All right. And while you're thinking, let's see here. Let's go to Isaiah 44. Wow. See, this is one of the problems with a lot of us. 
We think we're born again Christians. We think we're filled with the Holy Ghost and that with a mighty burning fire. But I'm telling you, there are some demons when, when Satan pushes some of them buttons that you haven't had pushed for a while, you might be surprised at how low you'll stoop to handle what Satan is throwing your way. See, one of the ways, one of the meanings, I'm getting this right now. I never thought of this. One of the reasons that Jesus said, turn the other cheek, is not so you can sit up there and look like a sissy, but think about it in the natural. Let's say somebody hauls off and tries to punch you. And while they punch you, they try to punch you on your right cheek. And you just turn it. You turn it away. They're not going to be able to get a good contact on you. See, it's better to duck than to stand rigid and face it. It's better to run than it is to stand there and try to combat your opponent. Listen to this. Now, this is what my old pastor used to say years ago, and I'm going to quote it to you. Pastor Cushman, he used to say, a good run is better than a bad stand. Some of y'all don't have enough sense to raise your hands and run. Some of you don't have enough sense to know when to walk around the obstacle. Why? Because your pride is at stake. All right, now let's get past all that and let's get to what God says. All right, Isaiah 44, verse 21. Remember these, O Jacob and Israel, for thou art my servant. I have formed thee. Thou art my servant, O Israel. Thou shalt not be forgotten of me. No matter what the threat is, God's got his hands on it. He knows how to handle it. You don't. 22. I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions and as a cloud thy sins. But return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. 23. Sing, O ye heavens, for the Lord hath done it. Whoa, that's right there. It's done. It, it is finished. The battle is over. Ye uh, uh, ye lower parts of the earth, break forth into singing. Ye mountains, O forest, and every tree therein. For the Lord hath redeemed Jacob and glorified himself in Israel. Past tense is done. 24. Thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb. I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by itself. 25, that frustrated the token of liars. God will frustrate your enemies and make a diviners mad and turneth wise men backwards and maketh their knowledge foolish that confirmeth the word of his servant and performeth the counsel of his messengers that saith to Jerusalem, thou shalt be inhabited and to the cities of Judah, ye shall be built. And I will raise up the decayed places thereof that saith to the deep, be dry and I will dry up thy rivers that saith to Cyrus, that saith of Cyrus, he is my shepherd and shall perform all my pleasure, even saying to Jerusalem, thou shalt be built and to the temple, thy foundation shall be laid. Take it to the bank, y'all. It's done. It is finished. The battle is over. It is and Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord, y'all. It is finished. It's done. It's done right now. See it. Believe it. Receive it. It's done. In the name of Jesus, we're sitting right on God's word. When he stops, we're stopping. Because I believe God has spoken into your situation. Don't you? Denying yourself. Well, I've learned that denying my I need to learn to deny myself and my own understandings of things. And that's what's getting me further in my walk with the Lord. 
mm-hmm. is learning that my understanding of things is not God's understanding, not his will. It's his will, not mine. Right. And that's already saying of basically walking this earth is understanding. I don't understand and know everything, and my thoughts on things are wrong. Mm-hmm. Right. All of us. Right. Exactly. And what about you, Lynn? What was that that you shared? So just basically a, a, a friend had a problem with a relative and uh, uh, gave them advice to just basically let it go the best they can and, and don't say anything that you shouldn't say. Right. Because you're going to regret it. Right. You're going to regret it. You're not going to be happy with what you've said. Mm-hmm. And besides, they're going to take it badly no matter what you say because they're going to be in a defensive mode. So why even bother? Right. Look <laughs> at that. Look at that. Yeah. See, y'all, folks know when they walk with the Lord, they understand how to handle some of these conflicts, some of these threats. I'm telling you, the more you lean on God, the easier life will be and the less effect your enemies will have over your life. Also, uh, it was important to bring up that I felt that she was being set up by the devil because we're very close to end times, uh, being toward, toward the end. And I, I felt that the soul, her soul was at, at stake. And I said, it's a setup. I said, don't, don't take it. Right, right, right. Don't go for the okie doke. That's right. Yep. <laughs>